I'll try to keep this brief and not word vomit an entire novel. My husband and I have been together for 14 years. He's nine years older than me and has two kids from his first marriage, 23 and 20. Despite wanting it, I've never been able to carry a baby to term. One miscarriage several years ago, near the beginning of our marriage and nothing since. There is no rhyme or reason for it, and my husband and I have come to terms with the fact that we won't add to the family. I was sad, but it is and things have been tough financially the last few years, so I consoled myself that it's for the best. Until surprise the week before my 35th birthday, I realize my period is late. I got a positive test, and I'm honestly over the moon, if you'll excuse the cliché. My husband is excited, but wants us to wait to tell the family, which I agree with. I know the statistics, and I don't want to have to field constant questions if I misunderstand. Both of my stepkids are what you might call, failure to launch. Neither have gone to college and seem happy living at home, or with my mill, who's much more permissive than I am. My drama with my mill could fill a whole just no mill database, but I won't focus on that other than to say that when I first became engaged to my now husband, I made it clear that I loved the kids and wanted to be a good mom. In retaliation for the first and only time my stepson called me mom, Mill ignited a campaign of terror against me, using the kids as a weapon. Among other things, she paid them $10 every time they said something mean to me and bragged about it to the rest of the family. So the relationship I have with them has definitely been strained at times, and we missed a lot of years of bonding, but it's improved as they've gotten older and floated outside of her sphere of direct influence. I know they'll never see me as their mom at this point, but I'm happy with the relationship we've managed to scrape together despite it all. Or at least I was happy with it. So here I am, pregnant, happy, and planning a new piece of our lives that I hadn't dared to hope for in five or six years. I let myself dream a little and went to a baby store, where I cried a little bit and ended up buying a soft gray blanket and a tiny pair of shoes. Later that same day, I had to unexpectedly pick up my stepdaughter from work. Cool, fine, no big deal. I stopped to get gas, and when I come back out, She's giving me the weirdest look. So, are you like pregnant or something? She dug into the bag when I was out of the car. I could have lied easily and said it was for a friend, but why would I want to lie about it? I asked her if she could keep a secret. She promised she could, and I confirmed. Needless to say, it wasn't the happiest of responses. She just said, Oh, well, that's uh weird, and was quiet the rest of the ride home. To say I was a bit deflated was an understatement, but she doesn't necessarily have to be happy about it. Me and my husband can still be on our own. Even if nobody else celebrates, we can. A few days later, everything else is going just fine. I'm counting down the days until the ultrasound. Everything seems good. Until my stepson decides to show me a chat between him and my stepdaughter, where she was talking about how gross it is that I'm pregnant. It's embarrassing. Everybody's going to assume it's actually her kid when we're out together. And just general, not very nice things. When she's back home later, I come out to talk to her, while she's watching TV with my husband. I'm trying to be chill, but my brain is going a million miles a minute. I asked her how she felt about the baby, and she responded with an eye roll. I ask her again and tell her that I really want to know because it impacts her life too. She's starting to get irritated with me. She says she's tired and had a long day, and could I just drop it? Maybe this is where I misstepped, but no, I can't drop it now. I keep asking her to talk, but she keeps refusing, until she finally decides to drop a bomb. You should just get an abortion, because this whole thing is effing weird. Honestly, I'm kind of shocked at this point. I knew that she wasn't delighted, but damn, that's a whole nother level. It was like getting smacked in the face with a sock full of nickels. I start crying, thank her for being honest like an idiot, and then leave the room. A little while later, my husband comes into the room, and I'm sobbing my guts out. I assume he's going to try to comfort me, or at least give me more context to soften the blow, which he does a lot when one of the kids says something awful to me. He sits down, puts his arm around me, and opens with, Maybe we should consider it. Come again? The F did you just say? He must see murder in my eyes, because he rushes on with how happy he is. But we're not really in the best place financially. But he just started a new job. But it's hard enough with the two kids already. But the kids aren't on board. I told him over my unalive body, that a baby that I've wanted for 14 effing years was getting aborted over that. It's a miracle baby, not a contestant to be voted off the island. I said some other things that I'm not proud of, stuffed some clothes in a bag, and came to my parents' house. I've been here for three days now, and no one has reached out to me. Not a effing peep. I just don't even know where to go from here. I feel like I'm surrounded by insane people who are all just looking out for their own interests. At least my parents are excited, I guess. I can't say that I am anymore. Update. 
No advice wanted. Sorry for the lack of updates. I really didn't think that many people would find my situation that interesting, considering the bullshit so many folks on this sub deal with. And the last few months have been kind of cruddy. Was that really just late October? As my story was last left, I'm 35 and find myself pregnant, with a very wanted surprise baby after many years of infertility. I have a rough relationship with my mother-in-law and two adult stepchildren. My stepdaughter finds out I'm pregnant, flips her SHT, and tells me I need to abort it. My husband apparently agrees after hearing her opinion. I left to stay at my parents' house and hadn't heard from my husband in three days. To be honest, I didn't want to see my husband at all. I had no desire after his confession. My radical act of self-care was ensconcing myself in my childhood bedroom, eating lots of potato chips, and watching too much Animal Planet. My parents, at least, were absolutely delighted by the pregnancy. I'm an only child, and my mom had always wanted more, but had infertility problems too. They went with me to my first ultrasound. They cried with me. They bought me a cake. My dad carved a little pumpkin with an amorphous blob on it that looked suspiciously like that weird, amazing amorphous blob on the sonogram screen. It was sweet. The day after the scheduled ultrasound and about two weeks of radio silence, I received a text from my husband saying that we needed to talk, and I advised him that he could come talk to me in person. We chose to meet at a neutral public location as my parents didn't really want his face darkening their doorstep and I agreed because I didn't want him tracking figurative SHT all over my safe place. So, we talked, or rather, I talked. I informed him of how hurt I was, mostly by his agreement with SD. He said he understood. I informed him that I would not be aborting for the comfort of an overgrown toddler. He nodded his head sagely. I informed him how the ultrasound went. He looked interested. I informed him that he and his children would be moving out of my house within 30 days. He was somewhat less in agreement with this point. Dear reader, I honestly had no Fs to give at this point. He had let me stew for days and days by myself. I'm not sure if his tactic was to let me suck myself into an anxiety vortex, as I'm wont to do, and come crying back, as I have before. Just no more. I can only assume those days I spent buried beneath blankets served as a chrysalis, because I was not the same person when I went out as when I went in. I wanted them out of my house. The house that I bought before our marriage, the house that was in only my name those bricks were designed to hold happiness. Not petty comments and miserable people disguising their own black hearts with my tendency to see the best in them. It was mine. And as selfish as I'm sure someone will tell me it is, it was mine alone to fill as I chose. And I no longer chose them. I wish I could say that my story ends with me happily getting fat and filling up a nursery with baby things. But it's not that kind of story. Around the time my husband and his kids moved their last box out, an ultrasound confirmed that my baby didn't survive. To say I was devastated would be an understatement but at least I had my own space to grieve. Not only for my baby, but for the family and marriage that had been my life for almost 15 years. I'm going to be okay. I am okay. I am also sad, discouraged, and more than a little hollow. But I'm no longer held down by 300 plus pounds of dead weight in my home. Thanks to everyone who reached out to me. Thanks for the advice. Thanks for making me laugh by accusing me of being a misandrist harpy and assuming I was going to run to the closest planned parenthood drive through Thanks for being kind. Thanks for being angry. Thanks for your understanding. Thanks for listening. Final update. Because I've gotten a few messages recently asking for an update, I thought I'd send one out into the universe to hopefully close the book on my story. At least, as far as Reddit is concerned. It's been about two and a half years since I last posted, and as it goes, a lot has happened between point A and point B. After I unceremoniously kicked my husband and his two children to the curb, they moved back in with my then mill. She was a controlling, cold person who enjoyed nothing more than puppeteering her children and grandchildren with an open hand full of money, all the while hiding a closed fist full of anger and resentment behind her back. Despite knowing this very well, all three moved in with Mill. She passed away eight weeks later. I found it darkly ironic, since if she'd shuffled off of this mortal coil at any other point in our 15-year relationship, we might still be married today. Or maybe not. But I find it very telling that whenever I tell a curious acquaintance that she am alive, the nicest thing anybody can muster is, well, bless her heart, in a very southern sort of way. As far as I know, my ex-husband and his kids are still living in that same house, as it's now his. According to his Facebook, while I will shamelessly admit to checking from time to time he's had a few relationships, but nothing seems to stick. Gee, I wonder why. After all, they're such a lovely bunch, since the children were adults, and we had little in the way of co-mingled assets. Our divorce was declared legal almost a year to the day after I filed. 
I'd honestly expected my ex to put up more of a fight, but it seems that his mother's passing took it out of him. I guess I can't say that she never did anything good for me. After all of this, I had no desire to seek another relationship. I was happy licking my own wounds alone, trying to piece together where exactly it all went so sideways. The universe seemed to have other plans when I randomly ran into my ex-boyfriend at the grocery store about a month before my divorce was finalized. When I say ex, keep in mind that our relationship was one of those insanely emotional teenage love affairs where all of the memories are carefully wrapped in a gauzy filter. We were one another's first everythings and broke up due to life and college. There was no big blow-up, cheating or anger. It was just growing up. It was a heartbreaking split, but you tend to be very different at 21 than at 16, and our lives were taking us in opposite directions. At any rate, we saw one another for the first time in 15 years over a pile of slightly underripe avocados. He was still tall, and perhaps even more handsome in the unfair way that some men age, but he was still very much himself. We decided to meet up for dinner, while he was in town visiting his parents because he works abroad. That meetup turned into a sleepover, I'm not ashamed to say. We went through a box of Trojans at a respectable clip for two people on the downhill slide to 40. It was comfortable and lovely, and I thought it was a nice final chapter to the previous story we'd written. We parted ways again as friends, and then, eight weeks later, I saw two little pink lines on a dollar store pregnancy test. Only this one decided to stick around, so now I chase my growing way too fast kid around and we FaceTime with her father at least once a day. No, we're not together, but we co-parent well. He's a wonderful man and a great dad. It may be unconventional by some standards, but it works for us, and he plans to move back once his contract is up next year. Needless to say, my ex-husband grandly accused me of cheating on him or throwing him aside for an old flame, but by the time he found out about the baby, the ink was long dry on our divorce, so his blustering amounted to no more than some angry, drunken texts and likely some hungover mornings for him. I wish him nothing more than all the happiness he brought me. So I think that's where I'll end this for now, since my daughter is due to wake up from her nap, and we're going to the park this afternoon. It'll be a good day. As an aside, my cousin sent me a screenshot of my stepdaughter's Instagram a few days ago. Apparently, she's been wholeheartedly celebrating the Supreme Court's decision concerning Roe v. Wade. Imagine that. Bless her heart. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.